hello. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Um, as you may already have known, I'm Chris from the NRVR podcast, and I'm going to start doing things a little bit differently uh, for a little while. Let me explain why. I've been wanting to work on a VR forest fighting flight simulator thing, and um, very much inspired by my last conversation with uh, Juliano Khalil. Please check that out if you haven't, and I hope you're all doing well, um, by the way. Um, anyways, been wanting to do that, and I realize that it's kind of hard to juggle getting new guests, doing the thing, getting ready for interviews, editing interviews, and that whole shebang while also making my own thing. Because honestly, I've been wanting to do my own thing and I've been experimenting here and there for a while, but now I'm really doing it. And so it's taking a second and the, because I'm not like a straight up programmer, I'm a script kitty, um, it takes an extra sec. Um, uh, so what I'm gonna do from now on for you know, the foreseeable future is I'm just going to riff. I'm just going to talk about all the different things I'm experiencing in the metaverse, all the cool news, um, some reviews of experiences and games I've tried. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Rogue's Star Wars Squadrons, um, some news, uh, and uh, full body tracking specifically. Um, and along the way, we'll see if I touch on any other things but yeah it's just gonna be me riffing i've it's kind of weird because i haven't done this i don't really feel like i've done this before that much i mean i've done it a, a long time ago and i think i got cold feet I, I don't remember why i got cold feet from it i mean it's not it's weird it, it is weird because i'm talking to myself but i'm talking to you um dear listener and i hope you're I, I, if there's someone out there who's listening, who's been listening to the show, by the way, for a while, thank you. I, I've been meaning to say thank you to you. I appreciate you sticking around and checking out the show through the ups and downs. Because, you know, I'm a human being and everyone goes through those. And sometimes you, uh, you, they're, those things are harder, harder to hide. Um, but things are well now. And I'm excited uh, to tell you all about uh, my recent adventures in the metaverse and all the cool stuff that's going on and just to, you know, have a good, cool conversation. I got full body, by the way, um, you can listen to this on iTunes or wherever you're getting a podcast. <clears throat> I don't think iTunes exists anymore, by the way, or you can watch this on YouTube. See, the thing that I like to do is I like to listen to stuff while I'm playing video games. Like I'll be playing time fall and I'll be listening to a podcast or the thing I started really doing lately is, by the way, let me check my tracking. Do I look okay? Let me shake my hips. Yeah, they look okay. Um, the thing I really like to do lately is I'll play, I'll be playing like uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, right? And in the background, I'll be listening to Dune, um, which, by the way, is an awesome audiobook. Uh, holy shit, it's really good quality high production values and the thing about it is that you'll be playing star wars battlefront and you'll be in there maybe listening to dune and then it's like weird because you're like imagining yourself being a soldier in that universe fighting those battles obviously it's star wars but like somehow my imagination allows me to like let loose of my inhibitions and i can see myself doing battle in the dune universe but i'm actually a stormtrooper so but i removed it's weird i can remove that myself and i've been doing that and i've been listening to um you know dan carlin's hardcore history he's been going through like this whole war of the pacific uh series which by the way if you haven't listened to dan carlin holy moly dude what are you doing get in get in on that uh, it's amazing amazing uh overview of history and the way he narrates things can't recommend them enough um no one pays me to say this uh, by the way this isn't sponsored by anyone so it's just my thoughts um so you know i'm telling you the truth uh so i'll be listening to that and i'll be playing battlefield 5 because i need something to hold me over till battlefield 2042 
um, which I can't wait for. I, see, I'm I'm very much against fanboyism, uh, but I understand it because to me, a good chunk of fanboyism comes from being uh, companies, brands, IPs tapping into uh, nostalgia really well. So, for example, like, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll hypocritically say don't pre-order games. But the minute, the minute they announce the date for Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, I'm going to pre-order that shit. Because Zelda has me... Like, if my balls were filled with nostalgia, it has me by the balls. I'm, I'm full... It, and they're full of nostalgia for things like that. And that's a horrible analogy. But you get where I'm going? Like, there are certain games... You know, I'm, sh you, I'm sure you have those. Where, like, maybe it's Halo. Maybe it's Minecraft. Uh, for all you Zoomers out there. Maybe it's Quake for all you Gen Xers out there. Maybe it's Pong for all you Boomers out there. Where they're going to come up with some sort of remake. Reimagining of the thing. Um, and you might and you might not not. And you might and you might not. What was the hell was that? <laughs> and you might get nostalgic about it. And you might get really into it. And you might uh, really give a shit about it. Some of you won't, but I'm one of those people where the right IP, the right uh, game thing uh, that I had a, a good chunk of my childhood um, immersed in, like, you know, if they come back, I'm going to, I'm there's a good chance, there's a good chance I'm going to pre-order it. The only exception these days I made was was this like the Super Mario collection where it came 64 Sunshine and Galaxy I didn't pre-order it I didn't I didn't I didn't buy it. I don't know why I, I I had a lot of fun with Mario 64 I had a lot of fun with Mario Galaxy Sunshine I couldn't really beat it, I think it was the harder of the two three it was really uh, for me it was really hard I don't know why but it, it was pretty pretty hard I never I couldn't beat it um but I remember 64, I remember Galaxy, amazing game. Sunshine was good too. But I didn't I didn't buy I didn't buy them. I just didn't feel like I don't know. I don't know. I didn't feel like I wanted to taint my memories. I'm sure they've stood the test of time. So if the one thing that Nintendo's really good at is being able to come up with games that allow you to be as evergreen as they can be. Um it's a reason why they're releasing so many like uh, re-releases of like Skyward Sword or you know uh, and uh, and honestly uh, don't tell anyone but uh, this but I'm been having so much fun playing mods a uh, mod modded versions of Zelda Breath of the Wild on on PC. It is a whole nother level. It is what Zelda is supposed to be. When you can play it at 2K, 165 uh, FPS, and with like crazy mods where like the like the Hynix can be a giant Shrek, or the Liz Zalfos are a bunch of Char Charmeleons or, uh, or Char Char Charizards, um, and so other so much other wacky stuff. That yeah, I love it. I love the modding community. I, and please, Nintendo, don't take that away from me because I, I love it. And um, my cheap ass needs to support these these people in the modding community. That's I think that's uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling I'm feeling guilty now that I think about it that I should support them because they really do a lot of good work. Um, but if you have the chance to check it out to hold you over to the breath of, breath of Wild too, um, yeah, check out. Zella's modding scene on uh, on Simu and all those other stuff because it's it's amazing, you know. It, I, I've been I, I was waiting forever for Nintendo to release like a Metroid Prime trilogy because uh, it would make bank. I would buy that. I'll tell you this. I would buy that at sixty bucks. I would. I would. It's a twenty year Metroid Prime. It's already twenty year old game, but I would buy it because it's so it was so ahead of its time. It was really ahead of its time and. I, but Nintendo never came through, and so I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, find how I'm going to find a way 
to get it on PC by buying a Wii U and um, emulating because emulating is not illegal as long as you have the thing. So don't do anything illegal, kids. Don't say it didn't warn you. Um, and so, and so, this is where we are. Uh, I just want to give you a quick tour of the world I'm in. This is some. Uh, this is a world by. Let me see. I just want to make sure I give props to the world creator. This is a Star Wars Hangout um, by um, Fillusion. Fillusion. Shout outs to you, sir, for or ma'am or miss to uh, or day for uh, creating this awesome spot. I got the. Uh, I think that's Tatooine. Tatooine. How do you pronounce that goddamn planet's name? I don't even know. But it's behind me. I'm in VR chat. And uh, the reason why is I want to talk about Star Wars Squadrons in VR. It's such a good game that I loved every second of it. And it's one of those... To me, when VR first started coming, popping around... Um, and I remember seeing the Trench Run by Boone Calhoun, I think his name was, back in the early, early ass days. I remember thinking to myself, that's low-hanging fruit. Star Wars, fighter, starfighter game, that's low-hanging fruit. We're going to get that in 2014. 2015 goes by, 2016, 2017, 2020, and we finally get a uh star wars squadrons game um and it's good i, I it, obviously here's the thing i'm there's this i don't know what it is about games these days by the way let me let me recalibrate myself i look my hip looks kind of wonky and i'm sure people are getting distracted by that here boom do i look better no i look horrible but that doesn't matter I, here, here let me uh let me um you know, uh, let me change avatar because I think because there there are better avatars out there. Ah, there we go, bit bit more appropriate. Bam, there I'm now a pilot from the. I'm grabbing my cord by the way. I'm not scratching my butt. Uh, if you can see this on YouTube, then you understand. If you're listening to the podcast, it's weird. Let me back to Star Wars Squadrons. It's it was a low hanging fruit, and then they put it out, and there's uh, and. It, like every game that comes out these days or 90% of the games that comes out these days from really big AAA, big studios and publishers, the first six months, they're beta. They're in their beta stages. They, they still, they had bugs to work out. Um, performance wise, I know there was issues with the new cards. And, and, there, and I remember being, I remember being on the forums looking for fixes because the performance wasn't good and the skybox was uh super blurry and little by little they were you know rolling out updates and now as of july 2021 i gotta say that star wars squadrons is amazing it's good it's it's great it's uh it's a triple a high action you, you know what I, it reminds me of? It, it reminds me of, it's weird, it's a weird comparison, but it reminds me very much of Tynefall. Tynefall is a game that I will go in there and spend 20, 15 minutes doing some quick 15 uh, minute, 20 minute uh, multiplayer rounds, and I'll come out and I'll get my, my fill. It'll be qu quick, you know, full of action, and the and i gotta give props for the star wars team in the on the mult, on their multiplayer side because they nailed that they nailed that ability for me to go in there for 15 minutes 20 minutes quick rounds no bullshit just action 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 um specifically with the quick matches I, I, the the larger battle fleet style ones they're I think they're a bit more involved. I think it will for 40 minutes. I, I, I played like three of those. Um, they're fun. Don't get me wrong. But I, I just I just wanted to get that quick 15 minute, 20 minute fix and move on to the next, move on to the next. And they nailed it. They nailed it. They, they really did find a good balance where in the game gives you that um, in and out, you know, nature of uh, getting a quick... A quick fix of, of of some some action, and the good thing about um, 
squadrons again uh, just to name off another a few things that i really like is that you know there are certain games that like uh when you take off the headset it feels good like you feel i don't know what it is it's i know uh, stanford has researched this where they'll play like you'll be you'll play a game as superman or some superhero and and all of a sudden or or a jedi or something i remember hearing about uh, how like you know participants in the study after coming out of these experiences their posture would get a little better and their they they walked a little taller and they felt more, a little bit more confident star wars squadrons when you do well um you it does that to you and the best way to maximize your chance if you're playing in vr to do well is to not play the empire because those fucking ships air it's like um it's no wonder why they fucking lost you know, you can't see anything. You got the... You, the, the look, I, I'm in VR. I can show you. Look, I'm, there, there's, there's a fighter right there. See, there's, see the fighter? There's a fighter. You can't see anything. You got that small glass window, and then you're covered in this bubble, right? So you can't look right. You can't look left. You can't look... There's a little window at the top. But what do you see there? You didn't see nothing. And so you can't... It's hard to sort of get your bearings... And so, and so that sucks because I, now I'm disoriented. And so that sucks because you can't really do much there. You, 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 you you'll get flanked. Uh, you'll get s people will sneak up on you, and you can't see where they're coming from. And the amazing thing about VR, and the and why you have you'll have a competitive advantage playing as uh the rebellion the republic and using a um a ship like the x-wing or uh, the y-wing um or the a-wing specifically x-wing and a-wing are really good because you get like a large window and you can look left you can look right when someone is tagging you behind like tagging uh, is trying to uh, tell you 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 can look be behind you and you can and then when you're doing like evas evasive maneuvers you can keep them in your periphery and you can't do that on a on a flat pancake monitor um and this is a, this is the thing i discovered with like um what's that other world war ii free to play game that you can it's like you can play and you fight airplanes and um uh god what's it called not war zone whoa uh. the point is uh even in the dk2 days when i was playing those uh, like fighter jet or fighter plane games same with star wars the ability to move your head around and track your enemies where whereas your your opponents a lot of them are playing in pancake mode they're on pc they're fixed they have a fixed view and and so you can and you can take advantage of that you can exploit that and even if you suck at first you can leverage that ability to your advantage and uh it'll allow you to come out feeling like a badass and this is where again I'm, I, I I go back to saying this is one of those games that I'll, you know you're given the tools to do well and when you do well you come out you take off the headset and you feel good you feel more confident you know if, I, there have been plenty of times um, where even if I didn't do well like I did it, it, good enough I still felt good because again the action was 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 it was filled with action and I it, it was. As a multiplayer, I, I the my only complaint with multiplayer is um, the same complaint I have for single player is that the um, I wish the maps weren't only in space. Like, like the Star Wars universe has so many like different planet-like landscapes, Mos Eisley. Uh, Nabu, Tatooine, 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 how the, f I don't even know how to pronounce it anymore. Um, all these different planets, the Death Star, you know, you just get down and down dirty in the Death Star in the trenches, but you don't have that in squadrons. You just have space and you got asteroid fields, you got, 
you know, different different things. Mean, space stations you can maneuver around. That's cool. And it, it does add variety, but I want to get down to the planet. I wonder what stopped the, the, the team, like the developer team, from like going, making a planet. Was it maybe the motion sickness? You know, is it, was it, I wonder if it was a motion sickness issue. I don't know. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of um, developers. Oh, there's a good chunk of them that will try to baby people. And so if, if people, probably the QA testers were like, oh, no, my stomach, uh, I can't handle it. I'm on a planet. I'm disoriented. Then the, then, then maybe my, my guess is that, you know, the dev team was like, okay, fuck, fuck. We're just going to do space. We're just stick to space. But I don't know. I don't know. And, you know, I, I wish, uh, I mean, at, at least they were forthcoming about this. Because when the game came out, they were like, yeah, this is it. 40 bucks, but you ain't getting DLC. You're not getting exp expansion packs. You're getting nothing after this. This is it. This is, all, this is the whole game. Um, and for 40 bucks, you get a lot of game. But I would have liked more because it's good. And when something is good, you just want more. Uh, and I don't know how to else explain that. Um, I maybe hopefully they'll come up with a, a second, you know, uh, part two, a sequel, because it's a game, a good game, and it tapped into it tapped into my nostalgia of me going to my dad with movie theater, 1997. I'm like eight years old or something, and then I go to the movie theater and I watch uh, the re-releases of Star Wars, you know, and and they're like, you. And then yeah, it was just it was cool and. And watching the movies at home, and um, and then the the music adds to that because it has that old school Star Wars. It's just John, very John Williams orchestra. Very I don't know what it I don't know what the word is. I'm sure there's a German word for this, where it just feels you know, 1970s epic, dope music. And um, I, I, yeah, it was it was a good game. I uh, it's a it's a good game. I dig it. Um, music wise is good. The single player, I really enjoyed the uh, the story, narrative, the production values, and the animations of the characters. Um, it was good. Yeah, it, I, it was good. It was good. It was it was um, without spoiling too much. It was a very well developed story, better than the new movies for sure, and. Yeah, I would have preferred to watch a movie about this than an actual, you know, uh, some of the... I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just jaded. Maybe I'm just jaded. Maybe... Um, but I like the old school ones. I like the prequels. Um, but the new ones... I don't know what happened. I don't know. The first one's all right. And then it just went... It's, they just pulled a Game of Thrones on, you, on, on, on the audience. I don't know what happened. Um... But Star Wars Squadron story, the narrative, uh, the way they just did the, they drove the story and uh, gave the characters life um, and personality, it was good. I liked it. It was, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have any complaints and I wish, but more games were like this, but you, I understand how expensive it is to make things look this good. That's the other thing. Like you, you gotta spend a lot of money, uh, and you gotta be Star Wars basically to pull off something this high production value. And they didn't put their eggs in that in in the VR one VR bucket. You know, it, it came out on Xbox and PS4 and PC, and so it's it, the, the and, and the fact that they added virtual reality uh, is awesome too. But you know, I promise you, it would have never been a native VR game. Um, so, yeah, and at the same time, though, it, it's the compromises of not making a native VR game aren't bad at all. Like it's, you know, it's fine. You know, I don't. They 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 were able to kill two birds one stone. You know, hit hit up that VR audience, and also do pancake mode and i think the game is great 
on both. Uh, but obviously, I'm a VR guy. I like the VR. It's, I would argue it's, it's a better experience in VR. But to each their own. If you like the game in uh, Pancake Mode, that's awesome too. You know, I can't, I'm not going to judge you. Um, so that's Star Wars. I don't know what else to say. What else is there to say? Obviously, there's, you know, there, were, there have been bugs that have been fixed. There's bugs that show up here and there. But more, I would say it's consistently runs really well. If, um, if, you, have, if uh, you have a good, really good rig or decent rig, and you, you, you won't have any issues. Um, and uh, yeah, more, more, please. That's all I got to say about Star Wars Squadrons. Um, I think the next thing I want to talk about is full body tracking. I've been recently uh, extended to a new realm wherein people can see my hips and they don't lie in my feet and I can tap dance, you know, I can do, I can do a bunch of, I, 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 I can salsa, you know, I can, I can, I can do the, the Macarena even better. Um, and it's, it's great. Um, but it's weird in that you've, how do I say this? It's, a, it's like a weird... <sighs> I'm not... It's weird because you know what it is? It makes me... What I've noticed is that... Um, it... It allows... It's allowed me... To... Ha make easier conversations with people... Who also have full body tracking... I and it sort of becomes a click um but how do I say that it's like a uh, it's like uh it's like a uh, it's like it's like a class thing like I'm not I don't have I'm not rich you know um but I I've worked hard got some savings Got lucky here and there. Got some full body tracking. Um, and I don't look down upon anyone who doesn't have it. Like you've got a quest one, quest two. I don't give a shit. If you're if you're a good person, that's all I care about. You know, I'll have a conversation with you in VR chat. Um, but I but this is where you know, again I'm talking about social VR dynamics here. It's it's weird because it feels like um there's a, like a, there's like a, it's like car, kind of like a car thing. Like it's like a, like I'm sure people who drive really expensive cars have their own click club with their own way of viewing other people who don't drive expensive cars. Um, and it's weird. It's like that, that I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it, but that's what it, it seems to be. Sometimes it feels, uh, seems to feel like sometimes, um, that being said, I am having fun. I like exploring this new world where um, there are un there's underground raves in VR chat, um, shelter, uh, club Rizumi, uh ghost club. I mind you, I've none of them I've been been able to get into because it does require a good amount of effort. But somehow I like that <laughs> because it sort of filters out. It's sort of, you know, VR chat has just gotten $80 million in funding. Good for them. Congratulations. Applause all around. But when you become more mainstream, I have had the experience of having seen communities become more diluted in quality sort of on the shallow on the on the top as you go deeper in there and go deeper and deeper you find where people who are much more we're much there's higher quality higher caliber interactions where it's not just shit memes and nonsense at the top in the shallowness at the bottom there's like meaningful conversations and connection but you gotta like you gotta dig deeper and deeper and deeper the uh more popular the thing gets the more mainstream it becomes um and having full body tracking which by the way it does not a requirement but it does help um 
at least to me, to give myself more presence and going raving in these raves, the secret raves, those underground raves. Um, there's a really cool video on YouTube of, I can't remember his name because he has a really hard name to pronounce, but I'll link it in the show notes um, where this person is documenting the underground rave scene of VR chat. And it's amazing. It's nuts. You wouldn't believe it. I, and it's happening and it's, and I got invited to actually, um, a meditation, meditation session by someone named Finn. Um, uh, or Finn was leading it and, his, and their, their friend, I can't, uh, snow, snow bagel, little, not little bagel, someone bagel. I swear VR chat names are so funny. Um, I get invited, I go and they're having a meditation session, like 50 avatars in this cool ass world where there's like a fractal tunnel, giant tunnel and, uh, and one, and like on one side. And then there's you know, the fin, the leader was like bird, Phoenix, furry thing, fluffy looking, cute looking, but it was this really cool person leading a meditation session. Um, and my internet was total crap that day and I wasn't able to take full part in it, but I did get a few snippets seconds here and there. And I was like, wow, this is, this is it. This is like, um, this is, I, I, it's, it reminded me of Burning Man I, going out and there's, there'll be free meditation sessions where people are learning to meditate or practicing meditation together. And, um, and you're full of people who are nice and chill and they're just, and it, it's just a higher quality experience. And I got to see that and seeing that, witnessing that, experiencing that gives me hope that even though what may seem like VR is becoming uh, like terrible or more and more shallow there, if you dig deep enough, there's you'll find, you'll find the art, you'll find, you'll find the, the meaningful stuff, you find the good stuff, the gold. Um, I remember, I think Gunter used to call this um, mining through shit or something, or mining for diamonds. And, and it, it is kind of like that. It, it's hard. It takes, all, it takes effort. It takes effort. And along the way, you will run into, you know, low effort memes and shitty people. But I mean, that's, I, I think that's pretty much, I mean, you'll go to Go to any city, any any town, and spend a night in the bars, and you'll probably have the same experience. Wherein, you know, you won't find amazing, cool ass people right away. You know, I think VR chat is the same way. And so, yeah, if you guys have any experiences about clubbing in VR chat or running into cool ass people. And, uh, you know, share what, what did you do? What, how did you, what was your success? Like, uh, what did you do to be successful? And that's one my question. Um, and so full, full body tracking. I love it. I, I think it's awesome. Um, I wish there was, and by the way, I have the HTC Vive or the HTC dongle, the three, the, the latest version, whatever the most expensive, I think it's fine. You know, um, I was going to get the Tundra one. But I didn't want to wait, so I got the HTC one, and um, it's a damn shame it's so expensive. It really shouldn't be this expensive. I mean, it's just it's a hockey puck with some sensors, and the lighthouse picks it up. And I mean, it's awesome because it's like it it works. It it's awesome because it it works and it allows a different level of immersion. Like I can kick and I can see my leg, and it's so weird to see my leg in VR, and it's. I, I don't know what to say. It's 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 awesome, but it shouldn't be this expensive. Um, and Tundra is great, but even that should be cheaper. Make it fifty bucks. Why can't it be fifty bucks? Make it fifty bucks. Make something fifty bucks or less, and watch that shit explode. I mean, it'll just go supernova. People will want to use it. 
to dance to uh what else do they do i mean yeah i mean go in, into a private room and uh, do uh, erotic role playing because that's the thing i mean as long as you're in a private room with consenting people who are over age right legal age do it i mean that's what technology is for um and i mean so much other stuff it, it plays I mean, all kinds of different performances and experiences could open up. Like you can make now, you can make a full-on fighting game, you know, like a, like a Tekken-style game in VR. Not in VR. I mean, VR chat, sure, but in VR itself, and it, it would be it would be amazing. I mean, the only problem here, technically, would be the cable, because you'd be trying to kick. And you're going to kick the cable, right? And you're going to yank the cable out. So that's where... Um, that's where I we need wireless valve. Uh, why, what's happening with my leg? My arm? Oh, did my arm die? Uh, that's why we need wireless valve. Uh, please don't give up on on us. Uh, don't, don't just leave us with a, a valve index one. Come out with valve index two. You know, don't... And and if it's if you come out with another one, please make it wireless. Um, that being said, you know Valve Index is awesome. It still holds uh, really well. I mean, it came out in twenty nineteen. It's yeah, it's two years through three years, two years. It's it's fine. It's great. Uh, still, it probably won't change. This is my main headset, and it probably won't change for a while. I know the HP Reverb has a larger, but much better resolution. Um, but I want Lighthouse tracking on the headset. I don't think the HP Reverb has that. So that's an issue. Um, Knuckles controllers, Index controllers are, are, are fine. I like them. They're, um, they get the job done. Um, and I don't see any reason why I should try you know move to something else um so especially not the htc vive wands did they could did they really come out htc did you really come out with a vive new generation vive but you still got the same controllers because i know the vive focus has a new controller setup maybe i'm wrong and if I am wrong, I apologize. I shouldn't be talking out of my butt. But it's my impression that the next generation, like the Vive 3, the next Vive Pro, has, is using the same Vive wands, which are made out of adamantium armor, the same stuff that Nokia phones used to be made out of. But that design is outdated, my friends. That is, that's 2016. That is, you, you can't, you can't do that anymore, man. You gotta, you gotta update, make it more ergonomic, more like the Vive ones. Hell, even more like the the Oculus Quest controllers. Even the, they're great, they're fine. Um, I'm sure the headset is fun. I'm sure the headset is really good. Uh, not so much excited about that price, but uh. But I, I, you know, we'll 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 talk more about HTC on another show. What time is it? Let me check what time. The time is seven forty-three. How long have I been recording? I don't know. I might go for another couple minutes. Let's see what else do I have. Um, yeah, news-wise, congratulations to VR Chat for uh, Series D eighty million dollar funding. Um, uh, what else? Oh, uh, shame on you, Facebook, for trying to do ads in virtual reality. How dare you? You know, we knew it was coming. To the, to the surprise of no one, uh, they were trying to do this. And I'm, I'm kudos to the developer for that game called Blast On, I think, where they pulled out from that um, from putting ads in VR. See, the thing is, the thing is, like the Hoff twins like to say, you know, if you watch Channel 5, you'll understand who the Hoff twins are. They're, they're easily some of the greatest philosophers of our time. 
uh, Hoff Twins will say something like, um, players do what they want, suckers do what they can. And when you are trapped in a world where you're getting thrown ads and you're playing and you're paying for that game, you're paying for that to be in that world, you're getting suckered. You're a sucker. <laughs> what? And so no one wants to feel like that. I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to pay for a thing. It's why I, EA had a big controversy. And they keep trying and trying. They're going to keep trying to put ads in games. Like the UFC game, I remember. They, they, the UFC game came out. They were putting ads in it. People paid 60 bucks for that. And they're like, what the fuck? I didn't pay to see Clorox bleach ads in my game. I don't give a fuck about Goodwill tires. I don't care. Goodyear. Goodwill. Whatever the fuck. I don't have a car. I don't care. And, and, so the, and so in VR, where you can't look away, where you can't use ad block, where, and, and yet you're still charging me for a game, I, it's, 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 it's a shitty practice. It's hor No, it's, it's I mean, and, and, and look, and people, some people will be like, well, who cares? It's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll, pay for, I'll pay for that game and I'll pay for them to throw ads in my face that I can't look away from or click away from and then um, be tracked so that they'll know what my usage patterns are, whether I that game, that ad clicks on me. If not, then I will throw in another ad and another ad because that's, that's Facebook fit business model. I Look, do the right thing, man. Do the right thing. And people, make sure you don't get suckered in um, because I have a Quest 1. And I was all over that thing when it first came out. I still like it. It's still great hardware. It really is. I mean, it is literal magic. Um, if you still, if you bring it around. Most people, I, I would say at this point, 80% of the population, maybe 70, doesn't know about VR. Or hasn't had a proper VR experience. And I would say that Quest 1 is the bare minimum at this point. This is what this is. You can't go lower than that. Like, don't go around showing. Please don't go around showing. Um, or do do whatever the fuck you want. But if you show people cardboard, Google cardboard, or a, a, a phone a, at this point, a phone based experience, you're you're not doing VR any favors. Out of and there'll be a spectrum. Whether you you know you'll throw a hundred people in the mix. And maybe 30% of them will get blown away by the phone experience. But 70% will be like, oh, this is it? This is VR? And they'll never want a little, and it'll be that much harder for them to give it a chance again. So I think Quest 1 is a good, like, is where the bar has been set. That's it. And, um... PSVR is pretty there. It's pretty much there as well as like, it's uh, the great. The good thing about PSVR is that it's uh, pretty ergonomic, and um, the controllers. I mean, they suck, but but their experience that are tailored around that, so it's fine. But I would say that if you had a chance to show someone PSVR or Quest One, uh, go we'll go with Quest One. Yeah, I, I personally. Um, and so, um, where was I going with this? And so, yeah, and so, and so here's the thing. It, it, that's fine. The hardware is fine, you know, but you got, I'm very much mindful of making sure that if you're going to show me ads, you better pay me, <laughs> Facebook, pay me <laughs> for my attention. Because um, that's time I won't get back. And you're getting all the money. You got a trillion dollar business off of all these ads and my usage patterns and all of the other creepy shit you're harvesting from me. So you better pay me or else I'm not fucking buying your shit anymore um, if you're going to show me ads. And so that's why I'm all, all, all team, uh, team Index or PSVR or my, mi Mixed Reality. And um, 
I'm just crossing my fingers that PSVR 2 is really good. I, I, I've seen the controllers. I, I, the thing about PSVR um, is the walled garden is an obstacle. It's an obstacle. I mean, what it, what, if I could, if P Sony came out and said, here's PSVR and it works with Steam, holy shit, they would make money. What else do you think would happen? They would make money. Yeah, it works on PS5. Boom. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it for PS5. And it also works for Steam. You know what? They, you know what would happen? So, Sony, if you're listening, you would make money. This, isn't that what you want? You would make money. Because um, I like Sony's design. Their, just the, the exterior of their PSVR looks amazing. It looks so futuristic. It's like, a, it's like the perfect VR stock photo headset to use if you're doing like a, an ad campaign or whatever this is it's because it just looks from the future it looks great it looks like um I'll, you know i don't mind the simplistic nature of the rift or the quest it's you know it's it gets a, it's utilitarian it, it gets a job done and the index is a, a nice compromise between the psvr's flashy futuristic style and the quest minimalistic oculus minimalistic index is right in the middle uh and microsoft is somewhere in the middle i guess too um but sony please uh make it make it steam accessible make it make, make, allow people to play your thing on on the pc and they win you win everyone's happy Will that happen? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not placing any bets on that. I don't think I would win, but it would make. Uh, it would make sense. It would make sense. And um, and and so. I'm, but I'm excited. We'll see. I mean, uh, there's some pretty good IP in that in that Sony walled walled garden um, that I'm sure they're gonna tap into, and and that's that's great. You know, I, I remember playing. Uh, Skyrim VR on PS VR when it first came out. I think they had like a skill exclusivity deal, I think. But still, it was great. Uh, getting yeeted by a giant in that game um, basically ended my depression once. And so it was, it was awesome. And um, Resident Evil 7, uh, I would say that uh, my, some of my, my, I think at this point, my top three story-based VR experiences so far of all time that I've completed are number one, Half-Life Alex, Resident Evil 7 in PSVR, and number three would be a toss-up between Rogue Squadron or Rogue Star Wars Squadrons and uh What's another? I mean, Moss. Moss is close. Moss, Moss will. Moss, and I'm excited for. I'm excited for Moss book two. By the way, that's coming out. That's that. Uh, that was a really fun. That was a really good game. That was a really good, refreshing take on you know gameplay. Um, it was good. I mean, I'm yeah. I, I, we'll leave that for the next episode. I feel like I can go on for a while. Um, if you have comments, questions, or concerns, uh, feel free to email me at entervr at gmail.com or there's comments. It's the comment sections of YouTube, right? I'm, I'll be right there. And I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching, listening. Thank you for hanging out with me and my ramblings about VR and my thoughts. We'll see when I come back. You know, if this is something that is getting attention, people want to want more of this kind of rambling kind of content and my thoughts and ideas about what VR I'm experience, what VR experiences I'm trying out, what you know, my suggestions, my thoughts, feedback, and uh, just general general thoughts about what's uh, about the metaverse. I'll be more than happy to make more. At this point, my 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 pace will probably be one a week but we'll see we'll see if, if it if, if there's if there's more there then uh then i'll come back i mean honestly i can do whatever i want um but if people want more of this let me know 
Um, and so, like always, uh, stay frosty. I, I don't have a catchphrase. That was a horrible catchphrase. That was weird. Um, be awesome. Now that someone took that already. Um, um, don't unplug from the matrix. No, no, that's that's not a good one either. Um, I'll see you next time. I'll see you guys around. All right, peace. And then and then I'm, and this is my outro, and I'm gonna I'm gonna dance. Oh, hope I don't kick anything. Hope I don't kick my dog. Ah, 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 God, I'm out of breath. Can I kick as high as I used to? Ha, ah, ha, ah, oh, I just pulled the muscle. That was I'm an old fuck. Gah, kick, punch, punch, kick, kick. I love, I love seeing myself as a pilot from Titanfall. It's dope. Um, anyways, I'm out. See you guys around. Peace. <laughs>